Hello there ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video on SCUM. So today, we're going to be answering the question that I've been getting in my comment section for the previous two videos of 0.85 and that is, how do we change the settings for our single player and our multiplayer servers? Well, this is the video just for you. Hopefully it helps and if it does help, leave a thumbs up and remember to subscribe. Here we go, it's as simple as this. So once you spawn into your single player save, once you've got your character created and you land on the island, all you have to do is press escape and click on server settings. These are all the server settings from the server settings.any file, conveniently bundled into a nice user interface with toggles and the ability for us to save them without you know, restarting the server. It's only, if you notice at the very bottom here, anything with an asterisk requires a server restart in order to be changed. So that is like the gold wipe, the partial wipe, and anything else that falls underneath these tabs right here. But let's go down it for the general purpose of this video. So we've got the logout timer, and you can see here that these are all basically toggles here. So we can turn on and off first person, third person, crosshairs, map screen, Mines and traps allow skill gain and safe zones. Safe zones are the um, the traders. Anything with a green zone or a custom zone set as a safe zone, you'll you'll be able to gain experience. That's experience and skill gain essentially for anything like your engineering, your rifles, your handguns, your archery, your demolitions, etc. Limiting global chat. Rusty Locks Logging, now this is a logging file, enable and disable logging of lock picking in the world locks. So essentially, if you are a server admin, you can see who's been picking Rusty Locks in the likes of police stations and military compounds which have locked containers. We can also disable base building and obviously with the asterisks next to their name, a partial wipe and a gold wipe. Next, we're going to go on to the world. The world is essentially the NPCs, the loot spawns, etc. So we're going to go with the first subcategory, which is NPCs. I would like them to rename this to puppets or zombies, but that's besides the point. Anyway, these are going to be my single player server settings. So if you want to mimic them, all you have to do is copy this video. So max allowed zombies in the world. I'm going to put it to 500. Max allowed exterior zombies. Exterior zombies relate to the zombies or puppets outside of a building. So I'm going to crank them up to 500. Max allowed interior zombies. Interior refers to the inside uh, bunkers, inside buildings, that kind of thing. So I'm going to crank that to 500. You know, I'm kind of wild. Next is max allowed wild zombies. Wild zombies are the ones that spawn out in front of you when you're roaming the overworld. These are the ones that will appear randomly in a nice big kind of crescent circle or a crescent moon circle right in front of you. You, you. You'll usually see them before you hear them. You'll see them sometimes spawn in. I'm going to crank them all to 500. Max allowed drones in the world. Maximum allowed drones refer to the drones which kind of come down and look at you, the audience member. If you know the lore of Scum, you'll know that the little drones come down and they kind of watch you. They can't, that's the audience on the outside of the, the Scum map or the Scum world watching you survive, watching you be a con in this island prison area. You know what I mean? So I'm going to crank them down to zero because I don't feel like actually having any drones in my game. Exterior zombie amount modifier. Now this is the modifier amount which multiplies the amount of puppets that will be in the exterior of buildings on the outside of the building. So this is the max allowed zombies on the outside. This essentially multiplies it. So I'm going to crank that all the way to eight. Now bear in mind my old series had a 20 times multiplier on these. Unfortunately we can only go to a maximum of 10 but we, we take that, we just take that. So I'm going to crank that to eight. Interior zombies I'm going to crank that to eight. Wild amount I'm going to crank that to six. The only reason why I'm going to crank this to six is because the wild spawns are what are going to get they're essentially the thing that's going to kill me, essentially. So, wild zombies are down at 6. Interior and exterior are both at 8. So that's 8 times the amount that are allowed in the general area. Now, we move on to the cooldown timers. So if we hover over this, it'll tell us the cooldown in seconds between exterior pawns spawning exterior basically exterior zombies spawning in the world. So I'm going to leave these all as default for right now. You can tamper with them. The higher the number, the longer the cooldown or the longer the check-in time. 
you can drop them so there's more, so there's more frequent spawns, so they spawn a lot faster and a lot more frequently. So there you go. I'm going to leave these as default. These should be default for you as well as 300, 300, 10, 10, 10. Alrighty. Exterior zombie sprom, uh, spawning probability. This is the probability of exteriors being activated as you move towards, for example, a town, a city, or a farmstead. So I'm going to crank this all the way to about 80 to 70. I'm going to crank it to 75%. Interior Zombra, eh, so, b -b 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 I'm doing this while I'm really tired by the way, I'm doing this at like 2am so I do apologise for this. Interior Zombie spawning probability, I'm going to crank that down to 75% as well, so there's a 75% chance of exterior and interior zombies spawning. Disable sentry spawning, so off means they are off, eh, they are, so sorry, let me reword that. If it is toggled off, it means they are on. If it is toggled on, it means they are off. So I'm going to leave them off so they spawn in. Disable suicide puppet spawning. Again, if this says off, they are on. If it's on, they are off. Okay? So I'm just going to keep that. So next thing that we're going to do, we're not going to go to any more tabs right now. We're actually going to click on NPC and move. Oh, remember to apply. Click apply. Now this is the weather, so the start time. I'm just going to set mine to 6am, time of speed, uh, speed time of day, I'm going to crank that to 4 so it's quick. Uh, nighttime darkness, if you hover over it, intensity of nighttime darkness, the lower it is, the darker it gets. Now the lower means you crank it to the left, it's pitch black, you crank it to the right, it's not that dark, you can kind of see in the dark, you can kind of see your way. So I'm going to crank it all the way to negative 1. Sunrise time, I'm going to set that to 7 or maybe... Yeah, set it to 7. This doesn't really matter. This doesn't really matter in terms of gameplay. This is just my preference. So sunset time, I'm going to set that to 11 o'clock at night because we are coming up. We're, we're pretty much in the spring summer time here in Scotland. So sunset time's around 9 o'clock. So I'm going to push that another 4 hours ahead or 3 hours ahead. Anyway, click apply. The following won't be fully applied until the server is restarted. That is totally fine, you can continue editing at this point. We're going to move on to the map. Enable locked loot containers. The locked loot containers are essentially the, look, the locked loot containers that will be inside the police spawns or the police... Uh, the, the, um, the PDs, the police stations essentially, and the military locations like the naval dockyards. You know when you go down the down into the tunnels and you can go into that really nice secure locked off area and it's got low it's got an absolute wall load of locked containers that's exactly what this is so on means they are locked off means they are unlocked custom map this is not something that i would really fiddle about with when it comes to single player if you're doing multiplayer you can toggle this you can toggle it on and you can set custom coordinates for a specific map size as well as the width and the height of it so we're not really going to fiddle about with that too much uh, cargo drop cargo drop cooldown minimum this is the cooldown between or the minimum amount of time in minutes that has to pass between cargo drop events but because my episodes are usually an hour long i'm going to set that to maybe 30 minutes. I'm going to set that to 30 minutes, so it's a nice halfway point, so I might get two cargo drops in one episode. Cargo drop cooldown maximum. I'm going to set that to 45 minutes. Cargo drop fall delay. This is the delay in seconds for it to go from very, very, very high in the sky, basically down. Or, wait a minute, the delay before the cargo drop starts to... Ah, right, okay. So it toggles it, and then four, uh, 540 seconds later, it actually spawns in. So I'm going to set that to 300. Cargo, uh, cargo drop fall duration. This is 60 seconds, by the way. So I'm going to set that to 30 seconds. Cargo drop self-destruct time. This is, the, this is the period of time that you have to get to the cargo drop before it explodes. Now I'm going to only set that to 600, so that's 10 minutes. I'm going to set it to, I'm going to set it to 360, I'm going to set it to 360, that's 6 minutes total, by the way, for anybody wondering, that's 6 minutes total, so there you go, that's my settings for the cargo drop, 
and then we've got the hunting max allowed hunts so i'm going to set that to 64 hunt failure time the time to find the next hunting clue before the hunt fails now to make this a little bit easier on myself i'm going to crank this up to like 600 i'm going to crank that to 600 bear in mind that this is in seconds just to confirm that it is in seconds hunt failure distance this is the distance overall the minimum distance to animals that players need to have for the hunt to be considered valid in meters so i'm going to set that to 800 so it gives me a big breathing room in order to actually hunt animals and i'm going to click apply remember everything that has an asterisk for example max allowed hunts needs a restart to the server next we're back to the npcs we're finally finished with the world tab now we're going to go on to the respawn respawn refers to essentially your respawn what what you're allowed to spawn in if you're allowed to spawn in the sector if you're allowed to spawn in a shelter it gives you the overall price as well so what we're going to do is we're going to allow sector spawn and we are going to allow shelter spawn random respawn price now this is just a random spawn location so i'm going to set that down to 100 okay sector respawn i'm going to set that to maybe 500 and shelter respawn price i'm going to set that to i'm going to set that to five gold just to make it even more difficult for myself respawn a uh, initial take or random respawn initial time initial time in seconds for the random respawn to become available so that's down at zero so as soon as you die it's instantly available so i'm going to set these all to zero okay or 0, 0.0 just to um make sure that this works uh, random respawn cooldown this is in zero so zero seconds so it's always available if you die and then die again you know you now have to wait an additional 30 seconds for the cooldown to, to kind of reach itself so we're going to set that to zero we're going to set that to zero random cooldown reset multiplier now the multiplier refers to the amount of money that you'll have to essentially sorry I'm talking shit here. Multiplier for cooldown timer reset for the random respawn, um, res uh, respawn option. Again, I'm really tired. I'm so sorry about this. Um, so we're going to keep that at zero because we don't need to make that a multiplier or anything like that. We're also going to drop this down to zero and this down to zero so it doesn't actually change. Commit suicide initial time. Zero seconds. Commit suicide cooldown. We're going to set that to 30. Commit suicide cooldown reset multiplier. Get that down to zero. Permadeath threshold now this is something that if you've got a, a a multiplayer server this is the thing that's going to decide a permadeath on your character if you really don't want your characters to die set this to like 999 9999 just like that so there's no permadeath it's impossible to die unless they're terrible at the game but hopefully you're not hopefully you're not anyway that's the respawn sorted remember to click apply Vehicles, we'll start off with the resources, so I'm going to leave these all in default, but the higher the number, uh, the more fuel more fuel is essentially used. Multiplier that modifies how much fuel is used. The lower it is, the less fuel is going to be used. The higher it is, the more fuel is going to be used. Again, that goes for the battery as well. Battery drain from, v from devices multiplier. Now, devices uh, refers to... what does that refer to? Multiple that modifies how, how much battery is used from various vehicle parts. Oh, that's a new one for me. That's a new one for me. I'm going to leave these on default because I don't kind of, I kind of don't want to touch these. I kind of want to leave these as they are. Alrighty. Battery drain from inactivity multiplier. So this is when you don't use the vehicle or you log out of the server for a prolonged period of time. If this is set to zero, obviously there's no battery drain. But if it's one, it's default and the higher it is, the quicker it drains. Battery charge with all with an alternate <laughs> battery charge with an alternator multiplier. So as you're driving the car, how much is actually charged into the car? I'm going to leave this at one. Obviously, the higher it is, the faster it charges. And if it's set to zero, it doesn't charge. Battery charge with dynamo multiplier. Again, dynamo. The higher it is, the faster it charges. The lower it is, the slower it charges. So we're just going to leave these all on default for right now. Next is the spawning. Dirt bike max amount in the game world. Max amount of dirt bikes on the server. So I'm going to crank that up to... Crank that to 40. Dirt bike max functional amount. 
this is functional so this is basically maximum of functional dirt bikes spawning so they spawn with in a, a, essentially an engine so i'm gonna have half of them spawn dirt bike minimum purchased amount uh, at a trader i'm gonna set that to 20. Same, ago, same again for the Leica, we're going to push that to 60, we're going to have half of them spawn as functional and half of them spawn as a, essentially purchasable, purchasable inside the trader. Motorboat, we're going to set them to 20, half functional and half bought in the trader. Wheelbarrows, we're just going to cut them out because I don't like wheelbarrows. Uh, Wolfswagen, we're going to crank them to 60 maximum amount functional as 30 and maximum amount or minimum uh, purchase amount is 30 in the trader uh, bicycles i'm going to crank them up to 30 and we're going to make 20 functional and 10 purchasable bear in mind that this is a single player save but if you want to copy these for your multiplayer server feel free to do so remember to click apply Yep, the following won't be applied until the server is fully restarted. Okay, okay. Next, on to the miscellaneous maximum time of vehicle inactivity. Time in hours, minutes and seconds until the vehicle despawns if inactive. So, 600 hours. 600 hours it takes until a vehicle despawns in my single player save. This is default. This is the default setting for Scum. So I'm just going to leave it as it is. We're back to resources. That means we're done with the vehicles tab. Damage. Sentry damage multiplier. I'm going to crank that up to three. Zombie damage multiplier. I'm going to crank that to six. Item decay damage multiplier. Multiplier that modifies the damage that items receive over time. So 0.5 is the default. So we're just going to leave it as that. Food decay damage multiplier. The multiplier that modifies the rate of which food items spoil over time. It's at 1.0. So we're going to leave that at that. Obviously, the higher the number on each of these, the faster the decay on items and food as well. Click apply. That's that sorted. Features. Now, this has got a few things in it. So, we're on the subcategory of base building. Maximum amount of elements per flag. So, this is the flag that you put down, and this is the maximum amount that you can get per flag. Because this is single player, I'm going to be building a relatively decent base. So, I'm going to have 500. Maximum number of expanded elements per flag. I'm just going to set that to 50. And allow multiple flags per player. Now if you click this on, there's no way to set how many flags that they have. So that might be something that they hotfix in the future regarding the user interface for the server settings. But for me, I'm going to leave that off. I'm going to click apply because I've changed the maximum amount of elements per flag and the expanded elements. So I'm going to click OK there. Resources. I'm going to leave these all as default. OK, I'm going to leave all of these as default. Water, uh, periodic initial amount multiplier, the higher this is, um, the higher the repl replenishment rate on wells. Maximum am amount uh, multiplier, obviously the higher the number, the higher the multiplier, the higher it actually respawns. Water periodic replenish amount multiplier, what does this read as? Multiplier for the amount that is replenished in periodic replacement. Uh, replenishment containers in the base building wells. So the higher the number, the faster it replenishes. Basically, you can see what this is doing. The higher the number, the higher it responds. Alrighty. So I'm not going to do much with these. I'm just going to leave these as default because I believe the, the devs have got it right with the defaults. Anyway, moving on. We've got the resources sorted. Let's move on to item spawning. Spawner probability multiplier. Now, my single player server or single player series usually works with a four or three, three or four, uh, essentially, loop table. So, multiplier that modifies the probability of spawning items by spawner. So, I'm going to set that to three. Examine spawner probability multiplier. Multiplier that, multi that modifies the probability of spawning examine items by spawner. This is basically container loop. So, I'm going to set that to three. Examine spawner expiration time multiplier. Multiplier that modifies examine spawner expiration time. I'm going to leave that at one. Spawner expiration time multiplier. We've got multiplier that modifies spawner expiration time. I'm going to set that to one. So 
3311. Look table of three and the expiration time is one times. Okay, click apply, click okay. Farming. Plant harvest examine time multiplier. Multiplier that modifies plants examine spawner expiration time. So I'm going to set that to four. Right. First plant harvest addi additional chance 100%. So basically, when you first plant uh, your farm, you've got 100% chance of additional um, additional plants forming on that individual plant. As it reads there, percentage that modifies the chance for pro produce to spawn on first harvest. So 100%, or you can set it to 50%, or you can set it lower. The lower the percentage, the lower the chance. The higher the percentage, the higher the chance. Click apply. Miscellaneous. Disable exhaustion. A lot of people will be disabling ex exhaustion in 0 0.85. I can foresee it because a lot of people are not great fans of it. However, I'm going to leave it on. In this circumstance, disable exhaustion is off, which means it is turned on. If you turn it on here, it is off. Okay? So on means off, off means on. Body simulation speed multiplier. Time dilation multiplier for pr of prisoner's body simulation. So this is your metabolism essentially. Maintain items expiration time. So it's 360 hours. All right. Kill box defuse failure bonus. Amount of extra time in seconds you get for each failed kill box defuse. Now the higher this is, the higher the bonus. All righty. The lower it is, the lower the bonus. So I'm going to set that to 1.5. Enable BCU locking. Now this is usually for a multiplayer server. So if you want to lock them, feel free to do so. If you don't want to, you don't have to. If you're in single player, it doesn't really matter. Anyway, click apply. Remember, when you do any saves on this, always click apply. Always. Next, we're back to base building. And the last thing we have to do is set a custom zone. But because this is a single player save, we won't be doing custom zones. This will just be a free map with the trader locations, all four trader locations. And that's pretty much it, ladies and gentlemen. That is the single player uh, side of things. Oh, I need to click apply and click exit. And it'll take you back to the main menu. And that's it. That's completely it. That's the main menu for all the server settings. What I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly jump over to my multiplayer server and you're going to see the uh, a few different things added to that server setting menu system or that user interface. You'll see it in just a second here. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're now on my multiplayer server. So same again, I'm in drone mode here. But if you are the server owner, you will have to set your uh, your ID 64 as a server setting admin setting. That's a file that you'll need to go into if you've got a, a server with GG host, with G portal, with ping perfect, with Nitrado, etc. They'll be able to show you. It. It's also in the uh, the patch notes for 0 0.85 on how to do so. Anyway, clicking on server settings, you can clearly see that there's a whole lot more settings here. There's a whole lot more. Um, options here for your server so in general that's my name that's my welcome message my message of the day message cooldown period max ping logout timer logout timer will captured and you've also got the other settings which allow uh, voting as well that's one setting that you didn't see with the single player side of things so this allows for voting in the game so you can set like a 50 percent minimum a voting interest and player positive vote percentage is at 25%. These are just server settings that I've got for my server, but let's just go through them, shall we? Uh, for the world, as you can see, I have similar settings for my single player save as well as my multiplayer server. Uh, going to weather, again, similar. Map, again, a lot more similar stuff. Cargo drop. I get this is not as similar, but it's a little bit, more, little bit more lenient towards my players on the uh, the server essentially. And then we go back to hunting, and again I've made it a little bit easier for everybody to actually try because obviously the hunting is a lot. It, it, it's a new feature to the game, and it's a lot more difficult than it was previously because animals used to wander just aimlessly, and you could see them. And the hunting system has completely changed that. So. This allows them the freedom to actually try hunting without it failing too much. 
and then we're back to the NPCs. Next we'll go into respawn and as you can see all similar settings, all similar things that you've seen before. Permadeath threshold for my server is 5000, negative 5000. People will not get to that, I hope. Vehicles, again I've left it on defaults. Lots of defaults here as well. Uh, this is the spawning chance. There's a few defaults here and there's a few alterations here as well. Uh, going on to miscellaneous, again Maximum time for vehicles in forbidden zones. This is a setting that you didn't see in the single player side of things. The forbidden zones are essentially the trader zones. So in two hours, if you leave your vehicle in the trader location for two hours, two hours, it will be despawned. It will be removed without, without any notice. This is the only warning that exists on the very front of the traders. You'll probably see it as you go through the, through the gates to various traders on the map, all four of them. It says if you leave your vehicle here for two hours too long, it'll disappear, essentially. Uh, next, we're back onto the resources, so we're done with the vehicles tab, onto damage, human to human damage, human to armed melee damage, human to human unarmed uh, melee damage, and throwing damage, sentry damage. These are the ones that you didn't see in the previous one, or the previous single player settings. These didn't exist. It was only sentry damage, zombie damage, item decay, as well as lock protection damage multiplier. I've set mine to two, so it's a little bit harder for people to get into your base via lock picking, especially if you've got a lock protection system on there. Uh, features, base building, flag overtake duration. There's no flag overtakes on my server, so I've set it to 999 hours. So there was no, absolutely no chance of any server to... Uh, any flag overtakes on my server. Maximum amount of elements per flag, 250. Extra elements for additional squad members is, a, is 50. Ma uh, maximum number of expanded elements per flag is 100. And I allow multiple flags per player, essentially. Uh, resources, again, all default. These are all your periodic gasoline, propane, and water respawns. Item spawning, there you go. Everything's a little bit different here. And I believe the last one, oh, squads as well. That's one thing that you didn't see in the single player, uh, single player settings. This allows you to set the intelligence level at level 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. But because it doesn't really matter in my server, the maximum squad size is 4, regardless of how smart you actually are on your, on your character. It will be 4 for level 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And farming. Same again. Plant Harvest Examine Multiplier is 2, 100% chance of getting additionals. Miscellaneous, Disable Exhaustion, we have Exhaustion turned on in my server, Body Simulation Speed is at 4. Uh, maintain Items is default, Killbox Defuse Failures is default, Bedroll Visibility Timer is 1, Enable BCU Locking is on, and that should be it. And I've also got my Custom Zones, as you can quite clearly see here. I've got my PvP zones and I've got one big blanket PvE zone followed by the outposts which are marked in green here. If you want some help with this, if you want some help understanding this, this is a layer system. You want to keep your outposts at the very top of your of your regions list of your layers. Refer to regions as a layer. So we have outpost A0, B4, C2 and Z3. They remain at the very top. And then we've got PvP zones all over the shop. I don't know what this custom zone is, so I'm just going to... Oh, let's just reset that. <gasps> no, I don't want to do that. Exit. Uh, do you want to... Have you... You have... Uh, do you want to exit? Uh, yes. Back to custom zones. That's supposed to be renamed as PvP. Right, there we go. Apply. They're not meant to be called custom zones, they're meant to be called PvP zones because this is the this is the title that comes up in the top right of your co uh, of your screen when you enter a different zone. But there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is uh, server settings for 0 0.85 in 2023. <laughs> this is so straightforward. It's so easy. Anybody can do it now and it's very easy to understand what you're doing. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, if you've enjoyed this video, leave a thumbs up on this video. Again, I do apologise for being very tired and very all over the place. I kind of just wanted to get this out of the road because everybody was kind of asking about it. Uh, that is well, ladies and gentlemen, if you've been enjoying my tutorials as well as my series and the upcoming series 6 for Scum and you've still not subscribed, please consider subscribing, ring the little bell, you step to date videos just like this, as well as a Sunday night live stream, which starts between 6 and 7pm UK. You can see Wipe in the far right corner there, that's actually a player. 
And uh, yeah, we usually have a lot of fun on a Sunday night, live streaming Scum, DayZ, Project Zomboid or any other survival game. I hope this has helped you ladies and gentlemen, I really do because a lot of people have been having a little bit of a problem with the uh, setting of server settings and they've kind of seen that the server settings.ini file uh, just doesn't work anymore. It's because it's, it's now essentially a server or an in-game menu item. So there you go, server settings. It's that easy. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I'm away in my bed. Have a lovely night. As always, I've been Mr. Feudal. I'll see you all another time.